Hi guys, uh, my name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a consultant cardiologist in York and today I wanted to do a video on atrial fibrillation and this video is entitled Atrial Fibrillation and its Silent but Deadly Parent. Okay, Now, atrial fibrillation is one of the commonest, commonest heart rhythm disturbances uh, known. It is associated with an increased risk of stroke and when a person is diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, most doctors would look for risk factors which could be causing the atrial fibrillation, but also increase the risk of strokes when associated with atrial fibrillation. Such risk factors include high blood pressure, diabetes, heart failure, pre-existing heart disease. There is, however, one really important risk factor, which is uh, extremely common, yet seldom diagnosed. Okay, And this risk factor is a condition called sleep apnea. Sleep apnea affects about 100 million people worldwide. And 85% of these people are undiagnosed. They go undiagnosed because not many people recognize the symptoms of sleep apnea and not many doctors actually go out looking for sleep apnea. It would be true to say that one in five people in the Western world now have sleep apnea and one in two people with atrial fibrillation will have underlying sleep apnea. And the reason there is so much sleep apnea available uh, around now is because of the high prevalence of obesity or weight gain. The commonest form of sleep apnea is a condition called obstructive sleep apnea. So what happens with this condition is that um, we know that people, when they go to sleep, they go first into light sleeps. You know, So you're in light sleep where you can still hear what's going on. You're sleeping, but you can still hear. And then you sink into this deep, restful sleep where you are completely unaware of what's going on. And that's the Deep sleep is the sleep which uh, really uh, uh, is restful and very therapeutic to the body and where all your stress hormones go right down. Uh, so what happens in patients with sleep apnea is that they can go to light sleep, okay, but as soon as they start falling into deep sleep, their airways collapse and that could that is largely due to weight gain. And when their airways collapse, they can't breathe. And because they're not breathing as well, there's less oxygen which goes to the brain and the brain then pushes them back into light sleep. So what they do is they go into light sleep, then they go into deep sleep, and then they can't stay in deep sleep, so they have to come back to light sleep. And they do this even 40, 50 times an hour all night long. Um, and <clears throat> um, it's not uncommon for uh, the partner who is sleeping with a patient with sleep apnea to turn around and say, yes, I do notice this, but notice my partner stopping breathing at night and often I have to give him a little nudge just to make sure he's breathing. So you can imagine how stressful that must be for the body when the, you know sleep is our natural cure for stress and if we're essentially waking up, we're not completely waking up, but we're not getting that deep restful sleep. We're coming back to light sleep 40, 50 times an hour. You can imagine how inflammatory that is to the body. And therefore, it's also recognized that people who have sleep apnea have a much higher risk of developing high blood pressure, developing diabetes. It also increases the risk of developing atrial fibrillation by fourfold. Okay, And you have a higher risk of heart attacks, you have a higher risk of strokes, you have a higher risk of sudden death, you have a higher risk of depression and tiredness, and sleep apnea is also a major cause for road traffic accidents because people are not sleeping and then during the daytime they feel sleepy and sometimes they can fall asleep at the wheel. We also know that if you have untreated sleep apnea and you have atrial fibrillation, the atrial fibrillation is far more difficult to control unless the sleep apnea is treated first. If you have an ablation, for example, for atrial fibrillation, it is less likely that the ablation will be successful long term unless the sleep apnea is treated first. A person with atrial fibrillation and sleep apnea does less well in every way compared to a person who has atrial fibrillation and no sleep apnea. So if you have sleep apnea and you have atrial fibrillation, your risks of strokes are undoubtedly greater than if you have atrial fibrillation without sleep apnea. So I think every person who is diagnosed with atrial fibrillation should be screened for underlying sleep apnea. Some of the symptoms that people should look out for are waking up in the morning with a headache or waking up in the morning not feeling refreshed, loud, persistent snoring at night, pauses in breathing when you're sleeping, and daytime sleepiness. And if you have these symptoms, and you know, some people 
become very reliant on caffeine in the morning because they think, oh, I can't get going until I have some caffeine. And maybe that's hiding this thing called sleep apnea and its symptoms. They're trying to treat the symptoms of the sleep apnea by drinking the caffeine. So it's worth just bearing that in mind. And if you have that, and particularly if you carry extra weight, um, it is quite possible you may have sleep apnea. As I say, one in five people in the population now in the Western world have sleep apnea. So it's really well worth looking into this. How do you diagnose it? You diagnose it by something called an overnight sleep test, which can be done at home, but can also be done in a specialized sleep laboratory. So if you're worried about sleep apnea, it's worth going to see your GP and say, look, I think I might have sleep apnea. Can you please look for it? How do you treat it? Well, the ultimate treatment is weight loss, If, in particular if the sleep apnea is associated with obesity. Uh, but weight loss can be difficult, uh, particularly if you're feeling tired and lethargic all the time. So you can have this machine called a CPAP machine. And basically what this machine does is it blows air into the airways and stops them from collapsing. And uh, this keeps them open. That means that the brain is constantly, get, the, the, the oxygen is constantly getting into the bloodstream, so the brain does not have to push you back from deep sleep to light sleep. And the great news with this is that once you have this treatment, um, you can get more energy, and if you use that energy then to try and lose the weight, then you actually break this vicious cycle uh, and you feel better. Um, if you will feel more energetic, your atrial fibrillation will be better controlled, your future risk falls substantially, you have more confidence, um, you will be happier, and overall quality of life improves. And we know that the only thing that really matters is our quality of life. So if you think you may be at risk or you may have sleep apnea, it's definitely, definitely worth investigating that and going to your GP and speaking to them. If you have atrial fibrillation and you haven't had, have, had investigations for sleep apnea, I do think it's really worthwhile. So I hope this was useful. Um, uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch if you have any questions. Sorry, this is a black and white video, um, largely because I can't, something's gone on with my camera. Um, but if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to drop me a line. My website is www.yourcardiology.co.uk. My Facebook page is um, um, you can get to it by typing in yourcardiology at gmail.com. Um, I have a Twitter account, which is Your Cardiology, uh, and I would be really, really grateful if you could consider commenting, liking, sharing. Uh, it may be useful for someone. Thank you so much. All the best.